back to the Coach Mack Show, our playoff edition coach. I believe this is the fifth year straight you and I have been doing a Coach Mack Show for, and had a playoff series, so uh, I'm getting spoiled to that. Yeah, we've coach, been real. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we've been yeah, we've been real fortunate, Charlton County High School. This will be our 25th, I think, in a row, uh, straight trip to the to the playoffs, 25th or 26th. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's something that we've become accustomed to, and and been real fortunate to be. Have good enough players we've been able to make it to the playoffs all these years but but it's uh like i said this is i think our fifth together and and um i guess our 25th or 26th i'm not sure which i know i've had a lot of fun doing it i appreciate you doing it all these years with me looking forward to a lot more <laughs> yep every year another playoff run that'd be great all right coach before we jump into commerce and the playoffs i know that's the big talk topic last friday night huge game 64 points on the board but it was spread around. I mean, everybody did a little something. Yeah, I think our kids came out and played really well. I think they were just, you know, excited again to be home and, and, and for senior night and, and that sort of thing. I know our uh, we had a fairly good week of practice leading up, which is always important that we had a good week. Everybody was healthy, uh, getting ready for this game. And Lanier come in. Of course, Lanier, you look at their situation. They've had a tough year. Um, I thought Lanier County played very hard. I thought they were very well coached, and but yet I think our kids got after it really well and really pleased with the job that they did. And looking at the stats for the Lanier County game, uh, rushing, you know, Andrew Lee had 11 carries for 106 yards and two touchdowns. Eric Johnson, I mean Eric uh, Daniels, only had uh, four carries for uh, 90 yards, so that's pretty good average, and two touchdowns. Uh, Raekwon Anderson, three carries, 29 yards, and then Ellie, uh, Michael Elliott, a freshman, also uh, number four, El uh, he had uh, two carries for 20 yards and, and a touchdown. So again, rushing was really spread out. We ran the ball for 270 yards, five total touchdowns rushing. Uh, then you look at uh, Passing, Jimmy Nettles, uh, he, he threw the ball 13 times, completed eight of them, pretty good. No interceptions for 125 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, and then A.J., he went in and played quarterback towards the end, but then again, we didn't really want to throw the football. He had uh, a couple completions there. So, uh, again, offensively, it looked really good. I thought there were some good things. I thought that uh, um, our backs ran hard. I thought a lot of people caught the football in receiving. We had, uh, I, I believe, we had a total of seven guys catch the ball, which is pretty good. Uh, Ethan, Ethan Sauls had three catches. Raekwon had two. Andrew Lee had uh, one, a big one for 40 yards. Um, A.J. Bell had one for 39 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Blackshear had, had a catch. Uh, Tion Burroughs had a catch for two yards and a touchdown. Uh, and then uh, Tyree Gibson had a catch. So we were real pleased with uh, uh, how many different people touched the football. Uh, so a lot of guys got in. I think we pretty much cleared the bench at the end, had some guys go in and run the ball really hard, and uh, really pleased with that. Uh, uh, we had Israel Gilliard had some real hard carries. He had four carries for 21 yards, and then Michael Elliott had, uh, had like I said, two for 20 yards, which is also a great average. Real pleased, um, real pleased with the offense uh, Friday night. Now, now the defensive side of the ball, um, defensive side of the ball, defense is our strength of our football team. We know that, especially our defensive front. The weakness of our football team is, of course, our secondary. Uh, our secondary gave up. Uh, eight completions, 27 attempts, but eight completions uh, for 197 yards and three touchdowns. That's that's really unacceptable. It's just it's not what we need. We did pick the ball off three times, which is good, but yet uh, we just the yards we gave up and the three touchdown passes. And again, you know, again, this wasn't at the end of the game. This was throughout the game versus our first defense. We were really disappointed with uh, our pass defense. Of course, we've been disappointed. Uh, really all year long now rushing we gave up they, they ran the ball 20 times we only gave up 20 we only gave up 48 yards which is something that we've kind of been all year long we've been really solid uh, defending the run and really not very good defending the pass so but again it, we got through it we got through it healthy we, we, we knew it was going to be a, 
a game that could have been lopsided, and, and it was. But again, I'm proud of our kids, the way they prepared for the game, like it was any, any other game. And also, I was proud of the fact that, uh, that, that we were able to get through healthy and get through with a, a lot of production on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, go, going back to a couple of things, Coach, I, I, you know, my hearing, um, I understand Raquan on his punt return, third mm -hmm. one of this season, it's a school record. Yeah, I, uh, I understand that Glenn Hughes, who uh, he's, our, he's our sports information guy, he takes care of all that. Uh, and punt returns uh, for the year, he's had uh, 14 returns for 299 yards. He has a 21-yard average, and he's had three touchdowns. His longest one is an 86-yard touchdown uh, return, punt return for a touchdown. And I believe, yeah, Glenn said it was uh, some sort of a record, I know. And, and then also I know that we had an interception uh, return for a record. I don't know if it officially goes as a 100-yard return for a touchdown. Or, but actually, he was in the end zone a couple of yards, so I don't know if it goes down as 102 yards. But that was, uh, again, we're talking about two freshmen now. Uh, uh, Blackshear, Demontre Blackshear, had, uh, had the interception for a 100-yard touchdown return for a, and that both those are school records. And also, I think uh, Glenn said the most points in a half. Uh, was also a school record. I'm not sure what we had at halftime, but he said that was also a school record. So, again, you know, really pleased most of all the, the records he's talking about, mostly pleased about the production we're getting from Raekwon Anderson as a punt returner. And also as a kick returner, he's also been doing an outstanding, outstanding job with that with one touchdown return, but he's had uh, over 320 yards returning on kickoff. So, uh, just a great job there by uh, a couple of freshmen we're talking about. All right. Talk about on the, on the defensive side of the ball. We held, I believe we held Lanier, I thought I read where, uh, yeah, we held him to 48 yards on the ground. That's excellent, that front, that, that front grab to get it done again. Yeah, our linebackers, we felt like our linebackers and, our, of course, our defensive line led by, uh, you know, led by Toby up there. We have three seniors up there, Tion Burroughs, uh, uh, we got Toby Dasher and then Omar Lewis. Those three seniors are do an incredible job on the defensive front. And those guys have done a great job all year long. Even though they've, it seems like they've been beat up all off and on all year. They've always answered the bell, always made it made it back through the week and uh, ready for game day. And then of course the inside linebacker, our leading tackler, Bryant Sloan. Uh, he's our leading tackler again. He has 60 tackles for the year. Uh, great job of him. So those three, or those four guys, those three defensive linemen, that one inside linebacker has just done a great job versus the run. And then, of course, we have some nice quick kids on the outside that have been good on the sweeps. And, and all that's going to come into play this week. Uh, it's going to be strength versus strength against Commerce. So, But, yeah, really proud of the job they've done. And, and I know you, on special teams you talked about, you know, Tomcat. Uh, Thomas Johnson, our, our kicker, uh, has done a really good job. I think he uh, – He's finished the regular season with uh, uh, 28 attempts for an extra point and has made 26 of them. Yeah. So very good job there. We need to kind of get him going he in that. Perfect, wasn't he? he was perfect yeah. Friday night. He had a lot of opportunities to kick, and he was perfect on that. And um, So, again, special teams, uh, I thought we punted the ball well. We tried to fake uh, on our punt, and which we, we do quite regular, and uh, we got different kinds of fakes in. But, again, that didn't work out the way we wanted. But but again, special teams was sound. Um, again, the only thing I was really concerned about was our pass defense coming out of it. But again, uh, seniors played great. All the seniors got a lot of playing time, which is always important on senior night. And so it was a great atmosphere. And, and uh, I know before the game, I had a chance to watch it on our film. Uh, a lot of seniors on the field. And with a football team having 14, I believe, and in total we had 44 uh, players and sets of parents out there. I mean, not players, but band members, uh, cheerleaders, softball girls, all that. So that was a great evening for everybody. All right. And uh, last Friday night, senior night, and everything with, you know, those ceremonies and everything with that. Nice way to have the last regular season home game. Huge win. Big crowd, good crowd here last Friday. Really big crowd, and, and uh, which is what we come to expect in Charlton County. We'll have a uh, big crowd show up and make a lot of noise and really uh, pull for our kids and really a positive group. And, of course, it ain't just for the football players. We have a great band, the uh, Band of Pride, the best there is anywhere. And, uh, of course, we have a great group of cheerleaders, and it's a great atmosphere all together. 
And uh, I think by us singing the alma mater at the end, that's keeping people around a little longer. Um, so real proud of the, the, the band and our players for, for doing that each and every week, win or lose. And that's always been a, a lot of fun. I know whenever we were decided to do that this year, I was kind of curious how our players were going to react to it. And they've reacted extremely positive. I, I, think, uh, I think they really like to finish off the evening singing the alma mater with the band and, and, and the fans in the stands. So that's been a great way to finish off ball games. All right, Coach. Uh, before we jump into the second half of the show in commerce, anything else you want to hit on? Uh, no, not really. Just, uh, again, just looking at the season. It, if you told me at the beginning of the year that we were going to win seven regular season games, you know, I would think that that might be pushing it a little bit. I knew that we were going to have to start a lot of freshmen, uh, a lot of younger players, a lot of guys that, that – all five of our offensive linemen only had one returning. Uh, linebacking group is all different. Secondary, we still haven't got a handle on it. But again, uh, um, if you told me we we're going to have seven wins and, and host the first round of the playoffs, I would have been very surprised but very pleased to hear that. So real pleased with the, the, the year we've had this fa thus far. Uh, had a chance to win one more uh, a couple weeks ago, but, but it wasn't meant to be. But really, seven wins out of nine games. We were only able to play nine games, seven and two, regular season. That's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, a lot of people around Charlton County become used to us having success. And, but I think that if, uh, if you realize the people around us and all around the state in high school football would be um, – they would take seven and two, seven and three every year. That's a, that's a great year to have and, and to host a first round playoff. And so we're excited about uh, moving on to the second season. All right, Coach. Well, we're going to take a short break and we'll come back. We'll dive into commerce and, and the brackets and all of that. Okay. Uh, we'll be right back with the Coach Max Show. Welcome back to the Coach Mac Show, our playoff edition. Now we're going to dive into our first round game versus uh, the Commerce Tigers. They get to make that five-hour trip this time. I know a couple of years ago we did that. That's that right. was a long, boring ride up that highway. It sure is. You know, we're excited about hosting a game. And uh, now, not really, and, I, and I, I feel for Commerce. I feel for them. I talked to their coach. I've talked to their coach a couple times since we, we felt like we were going to play one another. And I really, uh, I told him I felt for him because of the ride he's getting ready to have to take. But, but his kids, you know, uh, the one thing about players and kids, <coughs> at least our kids, and I know his kids would be the same way, the travel really don't bother the kids as much as you think they do. I think it bothers us older people uh, more than it does the kids. Um, you know, the, the Commerce comes in with a 7-3 and three record. Um, they come in with the number 9 seed. We have the number 8 seed. It's always interesting that in a 16-team bracket, that 8-9, that 8-9 is always a, a real interesting matchup, and a lot of times that 9 will beat that 8. I know that two years ago we were a 9 and they were the 8. We went up there. We were successful, had a great, great night, and had to win. And, uh, and I know a year ago, uh, this same group of Commerce Tigers, for the most part, this same group of kids a year ago played Clinch County. And we know how good Clinch County is. Clinch County, I mean, just is fantastic. And uh, this group right here beat Clinch County a year ago pretty solidly and, uh, up at their place. So I'm telling you, this, this Commerce team, Commerce is, is in, a, in a way is a lot like us in, in, the, in the reflect that uh, that you're always going to see them in the playoffs. I mean, Commerce has been in the playoffs. They've always been a factor in this thing. They've had some state championships. Uh, 
I, there's been times, I believe, back in 99 when we beat Lincoln County for the state championship, I felt like that we were going to play Commerce instead of Lincoln because yeah. Commerce and Lincoln were playing one another in the Dome the day after we did, and I'm sitting there watching it, and the whole time I couldn't take my eyes off Commerce. Athletically, they were incredible and, and just looked like a great football team, but Lincoln came out on top that day. But every year you can count on Commerce being in the playoffs. Uh, just a fantastic program, well coached. Uh, Coach Mike Brown just does a great job. I tell you, it's you, you watch him, and the first thing you noticed is you ain't going to see a better coach football team. Really? Coach Brown, his staff does a great job. And then you look and you say, I tell you what, the scheme is terrific. If you if you ever have a chance to watch Georgia Tech or especially Navy play football, you're going to see the exact same offensive scheme. The the people call it the ham bone. They used to call it the ham bone with Georgia Southern. Uh, some people call it the, the old wishbone now with wings. Uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it, it's it's a, it's an outstanding option offense. Uh, then they have some great players in it. The first player that sticks out, and there's many of them that stick out, you know, number 11, uh, Will Thomas uh, at fullback, and he's probably, it looks like he's about at least six foot to six foot two, 200 and 30 or 40 pounds, and he just he'll run the inside veer in the midline, and he is a great, great fullback. He's what you want. A couple of years ago, I thought they had a great fullback, and they did. This kid right here is, is just like that guy, and he is a fantastic player. The next player that really stands stands out to me is, is Cole Chancy. Uh, he's one of the halfbacks, and uh, and he also plays defensive back. I tell you, this kid right here can can play for anybody. He's a fantastic football player, quarterback. Uh, Caleb Brooks, uh, very 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 good quarterback. He's the kind of guy you really want running this offense with the triple option, making the decisions whether or not to hand it off or or pitch it or keeping himself. And then the other wing back we've noticed number seven, uh, Parker Hughes, uh, a, a senior uh, player. And now the, the offensive line is really. I mean, all these guys are talented. Tremendous athletic talent, right. but the uh, but the guys that, that makes this thing go is that offensive line. That center is tremendous. It's, it's the best center that I've seen yet this year, without a doubt. Their whole offensive line is, as a group, the best offensive line we've seen. Right. So it's going to be the strength of their offensive line going to, against the strength of our defensive line. It's going to be a great challenge. It's going to, it, you know, when you come to the game Friday. What you want to watch really is the offensive defensive line play because their defensive line is really pretty good also, I think. But that offensive line of theirs, the way they backside scoop block you and the way they, they, they do a great job and they'll full block and they'll do all that stuff and they're just tremendous. Uh, whether it's Coach Brown or whoever coaches that group is does a tremendous, tremendous job. Um, so, again, I, I just – that all that center is the best I've seen it all year, and that offensive line is going to be just tremendous. Uh, and uh, but again, it's it's it's. Is their offense similar to Clinch? No, not not, not really. Clinch County is a, more of a single wing and, and not a tremendous amount of misdirection and no option. These guys make you play option responsibility. You've got to account for the quarterback. You got to account for the fullback, quarterback, and the pitchback every play. And they will run a counter option off of you. So even though you think you're on the backside, you can very well be on the play side real quick. Uh, and again, it's just a uh, it's a great group uh, of, of players he has. And, and I, I know we haven't talked much about their defense. Their defense is outstanding. But that offensive line and those skilled guys we talked about is really what makes this thing go. And I, I'll tell you, it's, it's going to be really tough. We're going to have to be extremely prepared on defense. Coach Woods, our defensive coordinator, as uh, soon as we thought we might be playing him, he was already working on him. And we've spent a lot of time this past weekend and since this weekend really trying to figure out different looks to give them figure out different ways to uh, defend the option and, and the things we have to do. And, again, if you don't stop number 11 at fullback, really the game's over. But then, again, number two can beat you running and throwing, and his decision-making is what's really going to beat you. And, of course, I think number five is just tremendous. Uh, Cole Chancey is, is a kid that uh, is going to be one of the – as good an athlete and as good a football player as we've seen all year long. And I think that's saying a lot, being that uh, we have a really good, really good region and uh, – so I'm, it, it's going to be a heck of a contest. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a great challenge. I think our, our people here are going to see 
a tremendous football team and a great, well, well coached uh, by Coach uh, by Coach Brown uh, football team. I know when we went up there, I believe it was two years ago, right? We went up there and they were they were a very solid football team. And uh, that was the year too. We kind of gained our little our road warrior label, wasn't it? That was the year we went to Seminole and everything. Was yeah, you know, we've we've played a lot of games on the road, and uh, the winner of this game is going to have to turn around and go right back on the road. Uh, probably to, to Marion is where you're going to have to go. And uh, so uh, it, it's, yeah, you know, Charlton County football, it's almost, it's almost worse a little bit. We don't know, really know how to feel or how to act right now, being that we know we have a home football game in the playoffs. <laughs> it seems like we're always on the road. And uh, it, like I said, it's, I, I, we were at home last year for a game against Lincoln County, and it was great to be home for a game. And it's going to be great to be, you know, win or lose, irregardless, it's going to be great to be here and only be a mile and a half from my, from my house, and, and uh, which is going to be great. I'll be able to get home and go to bed after this thing. Either, either way, I don't have to worry about a five-plus-hour bus ride to, to get home. So uh, we're excited about the home game, and hopefully our community will get excited this, this next week and, and maybe, you know, maybe start painting up some store windows and, and putting some st signs out and, and that sort of things. It seems like that we've become so used to being in the playoffs and so used to having some success that we tend to wait to get really excited about the playoffs till later on. I, I'm really hoping our community and our people around will start getting excited right now because us having an opportunity to host a playoff game, there's only 16 of us, so uh, holding a basically a quarterfinal football game here in Folkestone, uh, I'd like to see some people get excited early uh, uh, because chances are we won't be back home at all. Uh, this will be the only game we get, so hopefully uh, we'll let the kids know that this is a big deal, that we're not taking this thing for granted, that here we are in the playoffs again. Uh, we ought to be excited that we're here and excited that we get to host one. And uh, hopefully I, we'll see some people get excited about this. All right. Coach, I'm going to back up a little bit. We talked a lot about the uh, Commerce offense. I failed to bring up their defense. What do you expect to see out of them defensively? Well, again, you look at they're starting with their defensive front, and they play a lot of teams that run the football, and we're mostly a running football team. Um, you see them well coached. You see them in position. You see them on the defensive line slant and stunt, uh, and that's coaching. That's really sound coaching by, 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 by Coach Brown and his staff. Uh, defensively, you're never going to get them out of position. They're going to have everybody covered in the passing game and, and, and so forth. They're going to be able to throw different schemes at you. I'm sure they'll run some great zone coverage, probably throw in some man and different things. Uh, and again, special teams, very good on special teams. Uh, they, you know, we were looking at a lot of special teams today trying to get a handle on, on some things, and, and we feel like that, uh, that, that we could lose this thing on special teams. They're that good on that side of the ball. So defensively, very sound, very physical, get to the football. Uh, it's, it's a football team that really has no flaws and no weaknesses. I, I really believe that. And it's a team that, and I feel like we have flaws and we have weaknesses. So for us to win this thing, we're going to have to play better than we have been playing. All right, Coach. That's up. Uh, well, we've, we've covered Commerce. They're solid up front, big boys. A little, a little bit. Of, I know you've seen more film than I have. A little bit of film I've seen. They look like they're strong. Not a lot of speed in the backfield, but very strong and powerful. Well, Commerce is also well known for their wrestling program. Uh, their state. They got several state champions, and several of these kids do an incredible job in the weight room. You can tell. You can tell when you look at a kid. Uh, you know, most kids don't look like these kids look unless they've put in a lot of hard work in the weight room and uh, you can tell the center has, has he has, he's got the job done in the weight room uh, they have committed their time in there and, and the thing about it is it's obviously I'm sure they're smart kids and and like like I've always believed uh, a smart committed football player looks at weight room as an opportunity uh, other kids that maybe aren't as smart or aren't as committed look at uh, look at the weight room as almost punishment. Why do we have to lift weights instead of, hey, we get to lift weights? Commerce is obviously a football team that is excited about the weight room, excited about what wrestling can do. And I think their football and wrestling program probably goes hand in hand. 
uh, to where the kids are, become better wrestlers on the football field and they become better uh, football players on the wrestling mat. So the two sports really go hand in hand, and that's something that we're hoping at Charlton County High School is maybe get our wrestling program just, uh, better than it's been in the past, although it's been getting better. Uh, hopefully we'll get it better, and that's something that Commerce is really benefiting from right now is a great weightlifting program and a great uh, wrestling program. So, again, you're going to see some big guys. They're not going to be fat guys. That's the thing is you, you, you can be a fat guy and a big guy, or you can just be a big guy who has a lot of muscle on him, and that's what you're going to see from these offensive linemen uh, coming from Commerce. All right, Coach. Let's uh, move on a little bit. I know you're concentrating on commerce. We get a lot of feedback as far as region goes and everything. Five teams made the playoffs this year. Yeah, Sixteen teams total makes the playoffs. Five of them come from our region. That's really incredible uh, to have five of them. Now, it, you know, it'd be a lot of pride for this part of the state and a lot of pride for our region if, we, if all five of them could advance uh, in the first round. Now, it's going to be tough. I, I think that Clinch County, without a doubt, will advance, I, I believe. Irwin County, I have no question that they'll advance. I think Turner County's got a tough game with Tryon, but I really believe that they'll advance. I feel like those three probably should advance without a whole bunch of difficulty. Now, the real challenge, I think, is going to be with Telfair playing ECI, Ed ECI, and us playing Commerce. Those are the two games that, that, that are going to be the biggest challenge in, in our region. Even, I, I really believe at least three of our teams in our region should advance. And I really believe in the state championship game, one of our teams will be there. Without a doubt, I think it will be there. I feel like I feel comfortable that saying that I would not be surprised if you saw Clinch or Irwin or Clinch and Irwin or maybe even Turner instead of Irwin, one of those in there. I really believe you're going to see probably Clinch in there in the finals. And then uh, and hopefully it would be great to have an all-region 2A state championship game, and it could very well happen this year. I know uh, some, there's some years, you know, we've done this. I've been with you now for four or five years. There's some years you can look at a bracket and say, well, that team's got a little bit of easy run. You can't really say that this year. Well, you know, not for us. Definitely yes. not us because the, the, the winner of our game is going to, to, to Marion. And Marion, I think, is a team that could be in the finals. I think it's a team that, that could very well face up in the semis with uh, Clinch County. And I believe that game would probably be possibly at Marion. I'd have to look at that. But, but again, you know, I think Clinch has a great bracket. Clinch County has the best bracket, and they've probably deserved it. And the next best bracket would be our, our region champions, uh, Irwin County. And, and, again, they've deserved it by, by being uh, the region champions. Uh, again, I, I think that they have a tough bracket. We uh, have a pretty good bracket. Without a doubt, we got a tough bracket facing Commerce. The only break we get is that we're, we're at home. That's the only thing we get. We get to be right here. Uh, but Commerce is a – Tough, tough draw. Nobody wanted to play Commerce, I can tell you that. And talking to all the coaches I've talked to, everybody said a first-round game with Commerce is not what you want, really not what you want. So, uh, But we got it, so we'll, we'll take it, I guess. And, uh, but then after, after our game, the winner of our game turns around and drives the day after Thanksgiving to Marion, which, again, is a, a, a very, very talented football team. Extremely well coached by Coach Sweeney, uh, one of the best football coaches in the state of Georgia. Uh, um, very, very tough thing. And then the winner of the Marion game, the Marion Commerce or Marion Charlton game, then turns around and goes to Homerville to play Clinch County. And uh, if you survive that, then you get to go to the Dome with what you have left to you to, to then compete for the state championship. But, again, it's a uh, – I'm not going to complain about being who we have in the playoffs. It might sound like I have been, but, but understand, being in the playoffs is a great thing. And you have to play the teams you have to play. There's no sense trying to dodge people and, and, and get an easy way to advance. Just play who you have to play and, and do everything you can to beat who you have to beat to advance. And, uh, and, and don't worry about You just take care of the teams you have to worry about. Don't take care of somebody else's game or somebody else's uh, uh, team when you don't have to worry about it. Let them worry about it and let them take care of their, their game. But, again, uh, um, you look at all the football teams and programs throughout the state and throughout the country who have never been to the playoffs or may have been one or two times their entire existence. So we, we at Charlton County are lucky. We're lucky to be in the playoffs. We're, we're 
lucky to be home here in the swamp on, on Friday night, next Friday, a week from this Friday, and hopefully we'll have a huge crowd, and hopefully uh, we'll show everybody, we'll show the folks from Commerce why this has been one of the toughest places to play in the past, and hopefully we'll have a great energetic crowd getting excited for, for one last home football game. All right. Coach, I wanted to ask you, this is our, I believe, our second year, second or third year with the power rankings. They've, they've tweaked it a little bit over the last couple of years, you know, Jamie. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, did they get it right now? I, I, I think it's it's about all we can do with it. Uh, next year, I know one adjustment they're going to make next year is going to be they're going to make two adjustments next year. They're going to go and take where the region champions aren't guaranteed one of the top spots. Uh, for instance, Randolph Clay. I think it's Randolph Clay. Their points aren't very high. They should be pretty well down. But they won that region, a relatively <coughs> weaker region, so they get one of the top four spots because they're region champions. That won't be the case next year. Next year they're going to go straight by the points. Oh, really? Whatever, wherever you land is where you land. Like I think somebody said, we may be in fifth with the points. Well, next year we'll actually have the fifth spot. We won't have to take after what's left. We won't have to take what's left no more. We'll actually get what we earn. And the other thing is they're going to add uh, eight more teams to the playoffs. So there will be 24 teams in the playoffs. And what you're going to do it is one through eight will have the bye like we have now. Everybody has the bye. Only one through eight will have the bye. But then after, then the first round will actually be nine through 16 will host uh, uh, 17 through 24. They're going to bring them in. And then from there, uh, let's say a, a number 20 team wins. Uh, that 20 team will keep that 20, their, their spot, and they'll have to go through the playoffs as a, as a 20, so they'll always be on the road. Uh, the only way you can host is if you're 1 through 8 or 1 through 16 eventually. I think you, or you could eventually host a game. So, uh, again, I think that's going to be better. That's going to give more teams an opportunity because there's some good football teams. There's some talented teams out there that didn't get to make the playoffs. You look at someone like an Atkinson County. Atkinson County was a tough football game for us. A lot of, a lot of good talent on that team. And uh, I would feel comfortable about them having one of the top 24 spots and, and getting a chance to play a playoff game. And I think that would really benefit our region especially. I think you could look at our region possibly having every one of our teams make the playoffs uh, because as, as, as competitive as our region is underneath that. The next big question that's coming up to everybody is reclassification. Uh, the FTE numbers have come out and uh, our number was 461. That's how many students we had the day they took the count. And uh, we're right on that line between single A and double A. Uh, the, the thinking is, is we will probably get into single A. Um, that's where it's going to fall, but it's going to be close. Uh, and if you had a chance to look at it, nobody knows for sure that we'll be in single A. I believe early next week they'll decide who's in single A, who's in double A, on up to the, the Super 44, which doesn't mean there'll be 44 teams, but they're going to call it Super 44. Um, we'll know something for sure next week what classification we're in. We're in. Then we'll start looking at what region we're going to be in. And I believe you're going to see teams like uh, Seminole County coming back into single A. They wouldn't be in our region. But McIntosh will be back into single A, I believe. And I think that McIntosh will be a team that could be pulled into our region. We're going to for sure lose Telfair. Telfair will no longer be in our, in our region. We're, we're confident that they're going to go up to double uh, A. And they feel the same way. So, again, that's going to be something else, not only watching the playoffs these next few weeks, but watching this reclassification and see how it, it kind of comes, comes about. And, and that's always interesting because everybody wants to know your schedule for next year. Uh, my big concerns for next year is who can find for our non-region games. Uh, again, that's, that's always going to be a, a challenge of who we have to play. And hopefully we don't have to play – Real big schools, and hopefully we won't have to play a lot of folks on the road, but, but you'll never know. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, Coach. Um, next Friday night, Commerce Tigers here at home, 7.30? 7.30. 7.30 kickoff. Um, any 
Anything going on there like pregame, normal, normal deal? Uh, normal pregame. We just uh, hopefully we'll have people here early. Hopefully we'll really fill up the stands. And, and I know, you know, Ware County's on the road. Uh, anybody in Ware County, uh, we'd love for you to come down to the swamp here. Our swamp, I know yours is the swamp also, the, the southern part of the swamp. Come and watch some Charlton County football and uh, people in Brantley County and across the border into Florida. Um, hopefully uh, come watch some football here at Charlton County. I, I know it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a tough contest. It's going to go all the way down to the end, I'm sure. And uh, look forward to having uh, not only support from here in, in the county, but maybe support from other counties yeah. in the area. Come on to Folkestone and see some high school football. It should be a good draw next Friday night. Like, like you said, um, Hilliard's off. I, I think Callahan's off. They come. Everybody come and support the Indians. That's right. All right. Well, we'll see you all next Friday at 730 right here in the swamp. Indians versus Commerce. For those that can't make the game, CSN will have the game live on the NFHS Sports Network. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.